Good morning. Welcome. How is everybody doing this morning? I am Rev. Dr. Kev, your favorite felon. I hope everybody is extremely more blessed than stressed on this glorious Sunday morning. Welcome. Welcome to the ULC of Kincaid Valley of the Bones podcast, Large to the Bricks Ministries. I'm glad to see everybody on this beautiful, beautiful day that the Lord has made. Let us all be glad and rejoice in it. Let us begin with prayer this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you for bringing us together, for just allowing us to have another day on this earth, Lord, allowing us to wake up. Many did not wake up today. Many don't know how it is to feel old, so it's sometimes a blessing for be able to feel old, to be able to feel them pains of life, but to know that we've made it through, and we've made it this far and continue to make it. Lord Jesus, thank you. We know that you are the Lord. You are the Lord our God. You are the Most High. Lord, we pray that this message today will come from the Holy Spirit, not from me, Lord. I want the words to just flow. I want somebody's hearts and ears to open and just let the just the word just soak down in them and maybe Lord Jesus will bring someone else to you today. Lord Jesus, I pray in your holy name that you please do something with our nation. Lord, put a hand of protection on that we're in such a despair and a violent nation right now. Everybody's just six-year-old little girls are getting shot because their basketballs are rolling in the yards. Lord, it's getting terrible. We need your help. We have a lot of war and famine and stuff, so Lord Jesus, please touch these families and everybody and, and any of the families and friends we have. We need some healing, need some help, whatever, Lord Jesus, be there with them. Let me lift up my friend Adam in, in prayer, Lord Jesus. He's homeless. He's got some health issues. Lord, he really needs you right now. If you can shine some love on him, help us find us. Let's get this man a place, whether it's in Australia, in the United States, or whatever. Let's get him somewhere to live besides the streets, and let's help him with his health. Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Man. That was powerful. Man, I uh, hope everybody's just doing wonderful this morning. And before I get too much further, please like, share, and subscribe. Um I'd like to hear some comments from you. If you want to comment directly to me, not through YouTube, you can feel free to use the message line that's going along the bottom of the screen. Today's sermon, I am the Lord your God. Those of us who are Christians, we know when we hear those words, I am, that's God. He is the great I am. You know, as we go, life progresses. I'd like to guys to sit back and think for a moment about what your life may be like just a year from now. Countless things are going to happen to all of us between now and then. We'll all experience another Easter. Just experience one, but a year from now, we're going to experience another Easter, another Thanksgiving, another Christmas. Some of us may retire. Others may change jobs or become grandparents for the first time or move. Those people that are married they celebrate an anniversary that may be their third anniversary or 13th or 40th anniversary. Those of us are parents. We'll notice our children will develop substantially, even if they're grown. They still grow and develop to become more independent and more competent. This might be the year for a child to move out of the house, even get married. We will all celebrate a birthday. Whatever activities or landmarks fill your time, we can be assured that life will just keep rolling by. Each day brings with its new experiences and challenges, some which give us joy and others which test our endurance. <coughs> Through it all, we will be developing as people. Our perspectives will change as we see more of life. We know that beyond the various things which fill up our day, we're supposed to be making spiritual progress. Each year, we get closer to the time when our lives in this world will be over. 
and we will enter the spiritual world, which includes heaven and hell. Our primary goal in this world should be to prepare for that, to be led by the Lord towards heaven. From time, from time to time, then it is just to reflect on how religion will play a part in your lives, in our lives. How will the Lord himself help us to make some spiritual progress? What is he leading us towards? What does he want us, want us to see about our choices and ways of acting and consider changing? What is most important to him? Let's look at the first commandment. Today's focus is on the most central religious principle to keep in mind as we strive to make progress in our spiritual life. Dedication to the Lord our God. This is why we'll look at our first commandment, at the first commandment today, the first thing, and in one sense, the most important, which the Lord commanded from Mount Sinai, said, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me, my face. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any other likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth, you shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers of the children and the third and fourth generation to those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. That's Exodus 20 to 6. That which reigns universally. There is a teaching in the writings for the new church that says, what is stated first must be held in mind and must be seen to reside universally in everything that follows. In one sense, it means that the first commandment must be held in mind when we look at the rest of the commandments, for it reigns universality in them. For example, the next two commandments teach about how to worship the Lord alone or have no other different face. We're not to take his name in vain, which means with honor and rever him, and we remember the Sabbath day to take time to focus on the Lord and to make him a priority. We're not to steal, because God, whom we worship, forbids it. He commands us not to commit adultery, because he is God of marriage. We are not to murder, lie, or covet, because in doing so, we are not loving the Lord, nor keeping his commandments, as the first commandment requires. In general, the first commandment calls us to commit ourselves to the Lord and to let him reign in our lives. If you think about it, we need this command. For religion to make any sense, we have to know who the Lord is. He is the central focus and the object of all our religious devotion. For us to see value in the Bible, we have to know the revelator. Then it can be a divinely authoritative God for us. We're able to to accept the path of regeneration of spiritual rebirth, we need to worship the Savior who makes it all happen. One teaching in the writings of the church says that what reigns universally with a person is that which is present in every idea of his thought and every desire of his will. That which reigns universally within a person should be the Lord. Another says a person's whole character is determined by the nature of whatever dominates his life. Let me say that again. A person's whole character is determined by the nature of whatever dominates his life. The Lord asks us to let him dominate our lives. He asks that we love him above all things, that we make him and his ways the priority in our lives. For he is the source, the beginning, the Lord our God. With the tone. One of the things we notice about the first commandment is that it's stated in the negative. You shall have no other gods before my face, rather than you shall worship the Lord your God alone. If we fail, he will. Visit the inequity of the fathers and the children of the third and fourth generation to those who hate him. For he is a jealous God in whom we should fear. We might wonder why this is the case. If worshiping the Lord alone is so important, why does he appear so foreboding, commanding, and manipulating, so distant? I've heard this so many times from people. 
As you may suspect, there are several reasons for such a tone. First, the Israelites, to whom the Ten Commandments were first revealed, needed such an image. They would not have listened unless a powerful, jealous God was speaking. Such an image caused them to pay attention. That's so much with a lot of the times of the Bible. People don't look at the times and the history, the hermeneutics of the scripture, and get down and look at the meanings. But another reason for the tone is that it teaches how to make the Lord our central focus. You shall have no other gods before my face. How? By not carving any images or making likeness on earth or in the waters below? All these represent things which stand in the way of letting the Lord reign in us. God mean God could mean <clears throat> selfishness, putting ourselves before the Lord, which is the root of all evil. So we want God. We don't want gods. Gods can mean selfishness, but we don't want God. We want God. We want to put ourselves before the Lord. We don't, we're not, we want, he's above us. We're not with him. He's not, you know, there's no other thing that's in front of him. He is, but right. here's God, here's us. We just want to be right mind sight with him. It can also mean worldliness or lack of concern for him beyond what we see and experience, namely the Lord. A likeliness in the heavens above or the earth beneath means pretending to be a good person. A person who acts like a spiritual and moral person externally is making a likeness or putting on a facade. The Lord calls such people hypocrites. When we get to the waters under the earth, we come to the direct opposite to worshiping the Lord. The waters and the things they contain represent a bodily orientated person who cares only for external pleasure. Such a person is dominated by appetites for worldly things, such as food or possessions or for physical lustful pleasures. This is a far cry from what is orderly. What the Lord, with the Lord at the top, and these cravings must further down the list in their appropriate places. The purpose of stating the first commandment in the negative is to warn us that we all have tendencies to love ourselves, to make ourselves appear like good people, to seek pleasure. If we focus on these things alone, the Lord cannot help us. Without him, we live lives which are pictured by the Israelites in the land of Egypt in bondage, controlled by negative influences which come to us by the needs of hell. Our lives will have qualities to them which don't bring us happiness, but instead make us feel miserable. We will act in selfish and manipulative ways and cause harm to the people around us. But the Lord wants us to realize that it doesn't have to be put that way. He can free us from these negative influences. If we put him first, he delivers us from the influences of hell. He gives us a rationale for the way things should be, with himself at the top, governing and directing our lives. With charity, with other people next, as he can next. When we can take care of our own needs and experience pleasures in their proper manner, with appropriate goals, eating to remain healthy, earning money, support a family, or even to live comfortably. It's not that we can't live comfortably, we can't look out for ourselves. A lot of people forget that, that we, we do have to look out for ourselves, but God comes first, and when we praise God, and we give it all to God, and we turn our problems and our stresses over to Him, you'd be amazed how they get fixed, how things happen. That bill you stress and worry about, that does you no good to sit there and stress and stress and stress on, and get angry or upset or anxious about, it's not going to help pay the bill. It's not going to help that bill be taken care of. I know it sounds kind of irresponsible to a lot of people, but I get a bill sometimes. I'm like, oh, man, I'm, I'm going to pay that. Like, it's on you, Lord. you got to figure this out. You want to pay. I mean, there's things that come along even with the ministry that I have to look. Is it me or is it God? If it's God, it's going to work out. If it's me, then not so much. 
but we all forget. And a lot of times, pastors forget. Church leaders forget. People, elders, and all that forget. We're not above anybody. We are God's children, just like that person that just walked in the church today, or that person just tuned in for the first time to a church service today. We're all equal. And I don't even care what color they are, what their sexual beliefs, or what their whatever, they're a child of God. And we're to accept them as such. But we're no better than them, even if you don't agree with how they're living. God is over all of us. And we're all here for a reason. I'll leave you the little, just the little quote that I love from Gandhi. In fact, I've, I've got it on my ministry uh, stuff and all that. A little bit of a twist. Gandhi says, let us be the change we want to see in the world. I twisted, let us be that positive change that we want to see in the world. That's what us at Parsha First Ministries are doing. We try to be that positive change, try to lead people to God, and let people see that He is the Lord our God, and He does come first. When you put God first, everything else, everything else in line is going to follow through. Don't misquote me and think you're not going to have trials and tribulations, because they will be there. They will be there. You will go through things. You're going to go through some things in life. And you're going to be like, man, I don't even think I'm going to get through this. But you know what? You will. You will. You'll get through it. You can. You can do it. With God, anything's possible. You can get through it all. Thank you guys for watching today. I appreciate everybody that watches, that listens, that follows me, subscribes to me. Um, it's an honor. I'm very humbled to have over 100,000 views this week. Um, I'm just a old man from Kansas who made a lot of mistakes, who's just trying to change the world now and make it a better place. And uh, it's a good thing. I really appreciate people watching my videos, content. Hopefully I can change somebody's life for the better and make their world a better Hope you all have a great, great day. Hope you have a great weekend, a great week, a great month, a great year. I'm the Rev Kev, Dr. Kev, and I am out. See y'all.